Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I am finally doing my bookshelf tour for you all. I have been promising that I wanted to do this for like a year and a half or so. I never did it, we then moved and I've put off doing it for a really long time just because it's a lot. Um, and I wasn't too sure as to how I was going to film it but I'm literally just going to go by shelf by shelf and just list off what I've got, how I've sort of organised it and I might do like my favourite books on each shelf. I think my bookshelf holds around 200 books and I've only read like 60 on the shelf so this is like my TBR and also books that I have read. This isn't my only bookshelf, I actually have two. This is the one from Ikea, this is a £35 one. Uh, it's the Billy Bookcase um, but I've actually got a second one which is half the size so it comes up to about here, the midway point, and that is over in my conservatory. But the books on there are my American books, which um, are different size and different height. Um, series that I've read out there and books to be read and miscellaneous books on that shelf. And I've got like cookbooks and stuff. So if you want another video of like what's on my second bookshelf, then leave me a comment below and I can do that. But this one is just going to focus on the main one in my bedroom. A lot of these books I have either been gifted over the years as like birthday and Christmas presents, brought myself either from like supermarkets or second hand and the majority of them like I said are second hand from charity shops or like online. My favourite websites to buy second hand books on is either worldofbooks.com, you can normally get like a discount code where it's like three for two so it costs you like five pounds including free postage for three books which is a really good deal and music magpie i love music magpie again they do deals they normally do two books for i think it's 2.99 and that's got free delivery as well so i'm just going to start at the top work my way down show you some favorite covers and hopefully you enjoy this video give you um, a quick overview of the actual bookshelf just ignore the stuff on top in this box here i have um, beauty products and bookmarks my jewellery box, a watch and around a bit of paper. So this is what you see when you actually look at my shelf. Like I said there are a lot of books on here. The majority of books that I read are chick lit. Um, I'd say chick lit gets to this shelf and then this is like my YA section. I've got a lot more YA in the conservatory. So right let's start at the top. So I actually categorise my books by author. I know a lot of people tend to do it in colour, which I do like the idea of, but just practicality wise for me, I like to group my authors together. So on the top shelf, we have got Jenny Colgan. Colgan has got a lot of series. She is a chick lit writer. So at the top, we have got Meet Me at Cupcake Cafe, Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe. This is a series. And we've got another series which is Little Beach Street Bakery, Summer at the Beach Street Bakery and Christmas at the Little Beach Street Bakery. God, this is a mouthful. We've got a couple of standalones. So we've got The Loveliest Chocolate Shop in Paris, The Little Shop of Happily Ever After, Diamonds Are a Girl Best Friend, The Good, The Bad and The Dumped, West End Girls, Operation Sunshine and then I've got another series here. The reason why this series isn't over here is because this is a red book and it would ruin the aesthetic. So we've got Rosie Hopkins' Sweet Shop of Dreams, The Christmas Surprise um, and Christmas at Rosie Hopkins' Sweet Shop. A few more Jenny, so I've got Class, Amanda's Wedding, that's um, like a standalone. The Summer at the Seaside Kitchen and Endless Beach, which is her newest novel. Well, apart from the Christmas one that she did. Um, so that's all my Jennies. I'm not going to lie, I said that I've read a lot because I've only read one and that was this one here. I've got Caroline Roberts. So we've got the Cozy Tea Shop in the Castle, the Cozy Christmas Tea Shop. So that's one series. We've got a standalone, which is Summer of Magic Moments. And then we've got another series here, which is the Cozy Christmas Chocolate Shop and the Cozy Seaside Chocolate Shop as well. And then finally, I have two series up here. This one ideally needs to be further down the shelf, but I've just got no room for it. So we've got the Hope Meadows series by Lucy Daniels. So we've got Summer at Hope Meadows, Christmas at Mistletoe Cottage and Springtime at Wild Acre. And then I have got the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver. So that's Delirium, Pandemonium and Requiem. First shelf. 
Um, out of the books on the first shelf, I really recommend this series here. I really enjoyed it. I read it, I think it was like five years ago now. Really, really liked it. Um, I didn't like the ending, but it was an interesting series to read. Moving down to my beloved Paige shelf and Lucy Diamond. I love Paige Toon. She's one of my favourite authors, if not my top author. Her books are incredible. I recommend her to everyone. If you're in a reading slump and or you don't know who to read, I always recommend Paige. Um, I <laughs> don't like the inconsistent covers, so obviously these ones all match. And then she changed it to this style, which I do really like. And then she also did this, which I don't like at all. So, starting from the beginning, um, these two are a series, but I've put it the other way around. I don't really know why, because this isn't a cover that matches this. So we've got Johnny Be Good and Baby Be Mine, so this one's the first, that's the second. And then all of these are standalones. So we've got Lucy in the Sky, The Sun in Her Eyes, 13 Weddings, One Perfect Summer, The Longest Holiday, Pictures of Lily, Chasing Daisy. And then her newest one, she's got one coming out in June. This one is five years from now, one of the best books I have ever read and I recommend it to absolutely everyone. One Perfect Christmas and Other Stories. So this um, has little, this has extra stories based on these books here. So don't get that unless you've read all of those. And then we've got the one we fell in love with and the last piece of my heart. So that is all the pages. And then over here we have got my Lucy Diamond. So I have only read two Lucy Diamonds, but the ones that I have read I really, really enjoyed. I have read The Beach Cafe and Me and Mr Jones, but from left to right we've got The Beach Cafe, Hens Reunited, Summer with My Sister, Over You, Me and Mr Jones, The House of New Beginnings, Summer at Shell Cottage, Secrets of Happiness, The Year of Taking Chances, On a Beautiful Day, Sweet Temptations, Anywhere You Want Me and One Night in Italy. I believe I have all of them apart from her new one but that's come out in hardback so I'm just going to wait until that gets released in paper and then add that to the collection. I really like um, Lucy Diamond's writing style, she writes from different POVs in some of her novels and they're great, they're really easy to read, I see them all over the shop like in charity shops and things like that so I definitely recommend Lucy Diamond. Carol Matthews books are absolutely beautiful and I absolutely love them, it's my favourite shelf just because they're all uniform, they're all consistent, the colour gradient looks really nice and I just absolutely love it. Her, her books are beautiful. Um, I have got one on the top here which is um, a minor indiscretion just because it doesn't fit here. Um, and this one is a library book so I just keep my library books sort of around here wherever I can fit them. Um, and this one is Karen M. McManus, Two Can Keep a Secret, so I still need to give that one a go. Carol is a great, um, like, chick lit author. I really, really enjoy her series. They're just really, really well written. So here we have a series which is The Chocolate Lovers Club, and that consists of The Chocolate Lovers Club, The Chocolate Lovers Diet, The Chocolate Lovers Christmas, and The Chocolate Lovers Wedding. That is one series. We then have a couple of standalone Christmas ones. So we've got The Christmas Party, Calling Mrs. Christmas, one of the best Christmas books I have ever read. I love that one so much. A Cottage by the Sea, A Place to Call Home, and then we have another little series here, In the Garden and Christmas Cakes and Mistletoe Nights. Those two go together. Really, really like that series as well. And then I've just got a bunch of standalones by Carol as well. So we've got That Loving Feeling, Paper Hearts and Summer Kisses, A Compromising Promise, With or Without You, The Sweetest Taboo, A Whiff of Scandal, You Drive Me Crazy, The Difference a Day Makes, More to Life Than This, A Million Love Songs, For Better For Worse, All You Need Is Love, The Only Way Is Up, It's a Kind of Magic, Welcome to the Real World and It's Now or Never. I have read a few Carols. I like to stagger my books, same with Page Toon. I like Carol's books, but I don't want to binge read them all in one go and then never have anything to turn to. I like to have the option. So I have read The Christmas Party um, and Calling Mrs. Christmas. I'll pull some covers out now. Carol's books and her covers are my favourite. They are so beautifully done and beautifully illustrated. Look at that book. Like, it's absolutely incredible. So I love that one. I love this one as well, like they're just stunning. Um, I've read this one, Cottage by the Sea, another lovely story. I've obviously read this one, Kate Shop by the Garden. Um, which other ones have I read? I've read this one, With or Without You. Let's move that one across. This one was a good one. 
and I've read this one a million love songs which is one of her newer ones that came out last year um she has also just released her um 2019 book but again that's in hardback that is coming out this month I believe so I will add that to the shelf and that's yellow so that'll fit right in there I'm not too sure which one I'm going to take off the shelf to fit on top um but yeah that is my Carol Matthews shelf I do also have some of her older publications at the back um can you see there there's a book there and that's the one with a cover that doesn't match these so I do have some more and they're just at the back behind the book so it brings them forward a little bit so that is my Carol shelf next we have got Millie Johnson I've actually only read one Millie Johnson book but as you know I'm a very big collector and when I like a book I then go out and just buy them all because that is how I roll so I've got Millie Johnson and then I have also got Kathy Bramley and a random YA that doesn't fit anywhere else so the Millie Johnson that I actually read was a spring affair I really enjoyed the book am I gonna be able to pull it out there we go that's that one I really enjoyed the book when I read it but I just haven't gone to pick up any of her other books I don't know why I really enjoyed it I prefer her over some other authors which you will see and learn about in a little while but let's start from the beginning so her covers I will also say are really pretty I like how they are all uniform so she's kept the same font even though she's slightly changed her spines like these have the girls um, and she's slightly changed the font I like how it's all still uniform and it still goes together so from where the girls were at the top they're now in the middle um, so I just like consistency when it comes to spines we have got the queen of wishful thinking the perfectly imperfect woman the mother of all Christmases sunshine over wildflower cottage the tea shop on the corner afternoon tea at sunflower cafe White Wedding, The Birds and the Bees, Here Come the Girls, It's Raining Men, A Spring Affair, A Summer Fling, An Autumn Crush, A Winter Flame, and The Yorkshire Pudding Club. I'm actually going to try and read a Millie Johnson very soon because I did enjoy the one that I read. I'll just show you a couple of her covers as well. So you can see they are very, very pretty. Really nicely done. I quite like this one as well. I can get it out. So yeah, let me know if you've read a Millie and let me know your thoughts. Um, I don't know why I haven't picked up any others. On the top here as well, I've just got some Debbie Johnsons just because they don't fit. So this is a series, but you can read them in any order. It doesn't really matter, but some characters are flitted in between them, I believe. I've got Summer at the Comfort Food Cafe, Sunshine at the Comfort Food Cafe and Coming Home to the Comfort Food Cafe as well. Here I've got my Kathy Bramleys. I have read two of these books and they're a bit wishy-washy I would say they're not gripping enough for me I like chiclet where I feel emotive and these don't make me feel emotive I love the covers they are beautiful beautiful covers and I'm glad I've got them I think they're going to be something I read in like 10 years time I know it's taking up space and I know it's silly but I got them cheap so the ones that I have read is The Lemon Tree Cafe and The Plumberry School of Comfort Food. I believe it's best to read them in publication order, which is why, again, I haven't read them. I get put off reading series when I have to read them in a particular order. I think I have to read either one of these next, but I don't really fancy reading that. I might want to read this one, but I might not be able to read that because it might spoil that, if that makes sense. So, unless it's a dedicated hardcore series, like The Chocolate Lovers Club, um, it does put me off, but never mind. So we've got the Lemon Tree Cafe, Hetty's Farmhouse Bakery, the Plumberry School of Comfort Food. I didn't like that at all. Appleberry Farm. No, not Appleberry. Applebee Farm, sorry. Ivy Lane, A Match Made in Devon, Wickham Hall, White Lies and Wishes, and Conditional Love. And then my random one here is Cecilia Ahern's Flawed, which I highly recommend. Love that for YA. Um, the covers, like I said, are absolutely stunning. Um, she's just released a new one again I don't have it damn it Ugh. but I will get it I've only been able to put my tripod down so I've got both hands now so I can so it's not as wobbly so this is my Jill Mansell shelf I'll just bring you out a little bit just so you can see all of the books so these are my only hardbacks on the shelf um, I managed to get these at a car boot for very very cheap which is why I've got them I really like how they look I like the colour gradient and they just look fab so 
I'm going to start over here. I'm going to bring you forward a little bit more so you can see. Those on the shelf, I actually have more Jill Mansells behind the books as well. So I currently own, I think I own all of her books bar one. I haven't read a Jill Mansell in over a year, if not longer. I like her book. Some of them are quite dated just because she's been writing for such a long time. And I do sometimes get the vibe that a Jill Mansell book is catered for sort of like the older chiclet vibe as opposed to like the younger style. Here we've got Miranda's Big Mistake, Good at Games, Head Over Heels, Making Your Mind Up, Solo, Nadia Knows Best, Two's a Company, Falling For You, Staying at Daisy's, You're the One, the One You Really Want, Perfect Timing, Open House, Millie's Fling, Thinking Of You, Mixed Doubles, and then I've got my hardbacks. So like I said, I got these for a really good deal. I actually managed to get three hardbacks for a pound, <laughs> which is crazy. So we've got Don't Want to Miss a Thing, The Unpredictable Consequences of Love, the wa A Walk in the Park, Rumour Has It, You and Me Always, To the Moon and Back, Three Amazing Things About You, and then her new one, which is This Could Change Everything. She's just released another new one, which is a turquoise in this style, and looks really, really pretty. Also have Sheer Mischief up at the top. I like how, again, these are all consistent. These are older publications as opposed to these ones, but they look really nice. They, oh, sorry, they are really nicely illustrated. Not as nice as a carol, but I do still oh, really enjoy how they look. Move down yet another shelf. I've got three more shelves to go, including this one. So this is my sort of chick lit style and then I've got a couple of series down here as well. I've got a random Sarah J mask there just because I got it the other day. I needed to bulk up the shelf. I need to buy, I think it's one or two more Jane Fallon so I've got all of hers so they will fit there but for now it's just like a filler book. Here I've obviously got, this is book two as well in them, um, A Court of Thorn and Roses I believe it is but I found that second hand. So Ignoring that one, I've got my Jane Fallon, Baking Friends, My Sweet Revenge, Strictly Between Us, Foursome, The Ugly Sister, Getting Rid of Matthew, and Skeletons. And out of these, I have read Faking Friends and Getting Rid of Matthew. I've got some Emotive Chiclet, which is by Danny Atkins. I've read a lot more of her books, but I've got them on Kindle, and I really, really recommend these. These are my two favourites, and I found these in charity shops, which is why I brought them. And that is The Story of Us and Our Song by Danny Atkins. So they're two individual stories, and they are incredible. They are so emotive and just such lovely, beautiful stories, so I highly recommend her. Going across a little bit more, I have my Heidi Swain collection. Again, she's the type of author where you have to read them in publication order. I have put them in publication order. Yes, they are. They didn't used to be. Um, I don't like the fact, like I said, I don't like the fact that I have to read this one next. I might want to read a Christmas book um, because it's cold outside but I have to read that to get to that. It just puts me off reading them. I have only read one. I've read The Cherry Tree Cafe. I think I gave this three stars. I don't remember anything about it but one of my friends on book club absolutely loves her books. Um, she's also from Norwich or she lives in Norfolk so she's a local author as well um, and I see and hear loads of good things. I just need to dedicate time to get to her. So we have got The Cherry Tree Cafe Summer at Skylark Farm, Mince Pies, Mistletoe and the Christmas Market, Coming Home to Cuckoo Cottage, Sleigh, Bell, Sleigh Rides and Silver Bells at the Christmas Fair. Why are these titles so long? Sunshine and Sweet Peas in Nightingale Square. And then this one is Snowflakes and Cinnamon Swirls at the Winter Wonderland. They sound like lovely books. Um, she's just released another one. I can't remember what it is, but again, she's completely changed the cover and the spine. So I probably won't be buying that, and if I do, it will go behind because it doesn't match at all. Um, so yeah, that is those. And over here, we've got my Lindsay Kelk section. So I've got her two series, but I also have her standalone books. I think they're either behind or in the conservatory. This is a seven book series, now writing another one. So it is a big commitment. So we've got I Heart New York, I Heart Hollywood, I Heart Paris, I Heart London, I Heart Vegas, I Heart Christmas, and I Heart Forever. I have read book one to three. I need to finish the rest of the series just because I want to see how it goes. Um, and I plan to read this one in the next couple of months and then just gradually get my way through it. And then I have got um, the About a Girl series, which is about a girl, what a girl wants, and the girl's best friend. 
I'm not 100% sure what these are all about, but again, I got all of these secondhand. Looking at the shelf, there is not a single book on there that is brand new. They are all secondhand, which is crazy. Uh, let me show you some of my favourite covers. So, like I said, I love the Jane... Oh, God, I can't get them out. Hang on. I love the Jane Fallon covers. Oh, my God, they're literally so badly wedged in there. So, yeah, I love them. I think they're really nice, simplistic. Um, and quite modern and I really really like those they're completely different to like the carol books but I really like those I'm not even going to put that back because I can't be bothered but I can just sit there um, I'd say that they're my favourite covers on the shelf I don't really like any of these these ones are a bit um, I hate to say it but they're like a little bit mumsy do you know what I mean let's get this one out yeah they're just a bit mumsy and then these ones aren't great at all Okay, so moving it down, we are now at my YA section of my bookshelf. I I just, I love YA. It holds a special place in my heart. I know I have got so many, like, chick lit adult reads, but I just love young adult. I feel like young adult reading just captures me at my heart the most. This is, like, the most recent change of shelf I've done. I didn't have these books on my shelf for a really long time. They're actually in the um, conservatory, but I just took out um, a, what is it called? A chiclet author and replaced it with these because I loved these books. Here I have got my Cassandra Clare books. She is one of my most recent authors that I have read and I absolutely devoured the whole series. She's really, really hyped about on booktube and I got put off reading it for so long because of how hyped it was and I really struggled to get into it because it's a different world, different like um, sayings and weird words for things but once I got used to it after book two I was absolutely hooked. It's a Mortal Instruments series like I said by Cassandra Clare so we've got City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls and City of Heavenly Fire. And then we have the spin-off series, which is the Infernal Devices. This is the Mortal Instruments. This is the Infernal Devices. And this is Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Prince and Clockwork Princess. I don't know if I'm going to get questions, but I'll answer it anyway. The best way to read them, you have to read these three books before you read this one. That's just what you got to do. It's not be-all or end-all, but... It makes more sense and there's a lot at the end of this book which ties up this series. <clears throat> so what I recommend doing and how I read them is to read the first three because originally this was written as a trilogy and she wasn't ever going to continue. So she wrote those ones and then I believe she wrote these and then she wrote these. So that's how I would read it. I would read Bones, Ashes, Glass and then go to Angel, Prince, Princess and then do Fallen Angels, Lost Souls and Heavenly Fire. That is how I read it and that's how I recommend it. I've got some more like YA books. So this is my Rochelle Mead Bloodlines six book series. This is the spin-off to Vampire Academy which I loved and read uh, I think it was like four years ago now and they were incredible. Um, they, like I said, are on the shelf in the conservatory because three of them are American and three of them are UK editions, so they're completely different sizes. But we've got Bloodlines, The Golden Lily, Indigo Spell, The Fiery Heart, Silver Shadows and The Ruby Circle. I want to read the series next year, I think. It's one that's been playing on my mind. I obviously did Infernal Devices and Mortal Instruments this year. So I'm hoping to focus on this next year. And so we've got Red Queen, Glass Sword and King's Cage. I really liked these. Um, this one drags a little bit for me and I haven't picked up the fourth and final one. I don't know why. It hasn't come out. It wasn't in. Um, it wasn't released in paperback for a really long time. So I'm waiting to find it at a good price. And then I might even reread the series to get into it. Because I loved the first one. It was incredible. And then I've got like my lovey dovey um, YA contemporary series. So these are all standalone books. I don't know if the characters intertwine within them, um, but this is Anna and the French Kiss, which is the one that I've read, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happy Ever After. Um, so I got those uh, on eBay. They were like £6, and they're beautiful, beautiful covers. I love how they look on the shelf. One of my favourite series of all time is To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. So that consists of, obviously, To All The Boys I've Loved Before, P.S. I Still Love You, and Always and Forever Lara Jean. This is actually a film on Netflix. Go and watch it. It's so good. And they've now made, or they are currently filming, this um, to come out at the end of the year. And I cannot wait because 
I love the series, I love Lara Jean and I love Peter Kavinsky and everyone and it's just a lovely hug in a book and I love them so much. And then I've got a random standalone which is It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne and I picked that up because it was 20p and it sounded good. I'm not going to lie, I don't really have any favourite covers just because some of these books, like they've got really tragic covers, I don't know if I can get this out and show you, hang on. These books, these covers are awful, I mean look at that, but the reading and the book itself is fantastic. So we made it to the last shelf of the bookshelf. Um, this is a really random mix. I've got a couple of like dystopian slash fantasy books up to here. Then I've got my Giovanna's and then I've got Jane Green and then all the way over here I have got my Sophie's which isn't even all of them. So Starting with just this little section, I've got The Night Circus by Erin Morganston, Caravel by Stephanie Garber, which I loved. I've read the second one, which is legendary, and the third one is now about to come out. Ink by Alice Broadway. Again, I've read the second. This is a series. This is a trilogy. The second from the library, and the third one has just been released. And then Fire and Flood and Salt and Stone by Victoria Scott. I love these two series. Um... I love the series, there should have been a third book but it never got picked up by the publisher. I think she's going to publish it herself and then release it so I will definitely try and get my hands on that because these were really really good but I don't recommend reading them because there isn't a conclusion and that really irritated me. We've got my Giovanna Fletchers. So Giovanna actually made me get into reading Chicklet. Billy and Me was one of the first like Chicklet books I read. So again if you want like a starting point I really recommend reading Billy and Me. But starting from left to right, i just done it in colour order. We've got Dream a Little Dream, which is um, a standalone. We've got a little series here, which is Billy and Me and Always With Love. This ends on, um, not really a cliffhanger, but there should be a third book, but Giovanna just hasn't written one. And then we've got You're the One That I Want, which I haven't read. And then we've got her, I, is it an autobiography? Happy Mum, Happy Baby. I found that in a charity shop for 50p. Um, so I have read... Um, I've read all of these up to here, so I've read all of those. And going across here, I've got my Jane Greens. I have read two Jane Greens, one of them isn't actually on the shelf. Um, and I really enjoyed the ones that I read. Again, it's just I've got so many books, I don't dedicate enough time to read the ones that I have. So I've got Mr. Maybe, which is one that I read and bloody loved it. It was hilarious and just lovely. So I really, really recommend that one. It's set in like 1999 and it's just like your typical rom-com movie and I loved it. The Love the love Verb, Sunshine Sisters, Falling, Saving Grace, Summertime, Summer Secrets, Life Swap, Second Chance and The Beach House. I have actually got a lot more of her books and they are currently in the conservatory. I hate again how there's no consistency with the covers but because they've been published over a series of time or a period of time they're all different, so I really like the stripy ones, so they look really cool. And then finally, I've just got a tiny selection of my Sophie's. So I have got The Undomestic Goddess, Remember Me, My Not So Perfect Life, Surprise Me, I've Got Your Number, Wedding Night, Twenties Girl, and Can You Keep a Secret. I have also got her, um, what is it called? Shopaholic series, that is in the conservatory. I've never picked up a Sophie, I don't know why, because everyone raves about her so much. I just, I think I feel quite overwhelmed because there are so many books, I don't know which one to start with, which is why I've kept the standalones on my shelf so I can just pick one up and if I like it then I can get started. But when I know I've got like a six or eight book series to read by one author, I just get scared going into it. So that is that shelf. Okay, so there we go. That is my bookshelf tour. I really hope you enjoyed it. I do apologise that I've put off doing it for such a long time. I just knew I'd get really out of breath doing it, which I have. And I've had to take so many breaks because I'm talking so fast. Because I don't want the video to be too long. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you've read any of these authors. If you've seen a book on my shelf that you think I need to read ASAP. Um, I have I have my own little book club over on Instagram which is book club with Jess we pick a new book every month and we discuss it all the good stuff I really really enjoy it I likewise do my book videos if you have any author recommendations leave them below and I'll be sure to check them out but like I said I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in my next video